great, so your files are organized, you're ready to go. The first thing we need to do now is open up DaVinci Resolve and we need to change some settings on your project and also some Resolve preferences. So we're gonna start with the project settings. I'll see you there. Assuming you have your film project open in Resolve, let's check out the project settings first. Down on the lower right, you'll see a little gear icon. If you click on that, it brings up your project settings. You can also go to File, Project Settings, or hit Shift-9. We have our navigation over here on the left. So the first thing under Master Settings is Timeline Resolution. You can see mine right now is 4096 by 1716 DCI Scope 2.39. What a mouthful. That's because I'm shooting 4K with this project and I was using an anamorphic lens. If you were shooting just normal 4K, 4K UHD, then that would be, you know this, 3840 by 2160. And then if you were shooting 4K DCI with a normal lens, and when I say normal, I'm meaning it's not anamorphic, 4K DCI would be 4096 by 2160. Now here's the big thing to know about this. You're not pouring cement. For example, I could set my timeline resolution on my project to 1920 by 1080, and then I could cut reckoning the entire movie at this timeline resolution. In fact, that might tax my computer a little less, and we'll, by the way, cover other ways to not tax your computer in post-production too, but I could leave it at this and then change it later and Resolve will just accurately map everything, so no big deal. My computer's fine with cutting the 4K footage, so I edit it that way. I like to see it at that resolution. The next thing you wanna set is timeline frame rate. This is something you cannot change later, at least not easily that I know of, but this needs to be set correctly at the beginning. Moving on down, video monitoring is something we don't have to deal with right now. This is for using black magic design hardware for monitoring your footage, that's something we're not covering in this lesson at all, so just leave all this as is. Optimize media and render cache. In post-production two, we're gonna take a deep dive into what this stuff is, but for right now, here's what you need to pay attention to. Render cache format. You want this to be probably ProRes 422LT. Again, we'll go into details on this later, but if you leave this at the default setting, it's gonna fill up your hard drive with a bunch of cache files and you'll be like, wait, what's going on? So set to this for now. If you're on Windows, you probably wanna use one of the DNX codecs, so like LB or maybe SQ. LB is less quality and so it takes up less space than SQ. And again, don't worry, we're gonna cover this in detail. Just wanted to mention that. Make sure you set your render cache to either 422LT or one of these low DNX HR codecs. And make sure there's a check for enable background caching every five seconds. And now down to working folders. As I said above, we're gonna talk about optimization in post-production too. But these three locations deal with where Resolve is storing files that are generated temporarily for your project and you don't want these going to your main computer hard drive. For example, you can see mine is set to my external drive in a Resolve cache folder that I created. So what I would do if I were you is go to Finder or Windows Explorer, go to your external drive where your film is, and then create a Resolve cache folder. And you can create that anywhere you want. And when we cover this stuff in detail, you'll probably end up changing the location of this folder. But just for now, create it on your external drive and then come back here and click Browse for each of these, go to that external drive and highlight the folder. Resolve will automatically create these final subfolders. You don't have to create those. So only create the Resolve cache folder on your external drive. Cool, the next thing we need to look at is color management. That's over here on the left. Some of you already changed this during production to see your raw footage correctly, but the default's gonna be DaVinci YRGB. We're covering all of this color stuff in detail in that post-production course, and you're gonna love it. I'm, color grading is so amazing. But for now, you just wanna set it to be color managed, and this is assuming you shot in Blackmagic RAW or some other type of RAW format. If you didn't do that, I would probably just leave it at DaVinci YRGB for now. But assuming you shot RAW, set it to color managed, uncheck automatic color management, and for your color processing mode, set that to custom. Your input color space is not important if you shot in Blackmagic RAW. If you did not shoot in Blackmagic RAW, you need to choose the RAW format from this list that you shot in. And for example, I could choose Blackmagic Design Film Gen 5, which is what my pocket cinema cameras are shooting in. But the reason I don't have to set this here 
is because the raw files take priority. When DaVinci Resolve sees the metadata with your raw files, then it knows exactly what your input color space is. Again, we're gonna cover this in more detail in the color grading course, but if you have any questions about this, just post in the community. Timeline color space needs to be DaVinci, WG, intermediate. The working luminance can be, I think it defaults to HDR 1000, that's fine. Output color space needs to be Rec 709 Gamma 2.4. Unless you have a monitor that supports a different color space and you understand that, of course, you, can, you know this can be different. But for right now, just set it to Rec. 709 Gamma 2.4. And that's all we need to look at for color management right now. Now on the left, let's click on Camera Raw and set your raw profile to what you shot in. So I'm gonna choose Blackmagic Raw. Decode quality, I want that at full resolution. And then decode using camera metadata. And now with that set, this is all we have to do in project settings right now. Don't click save yet, go up here on the top right to the three dot menu and choose save current settings as preset. Not default preset, but save current settings as preset. All of these settings are project dependent. So whenever you create a new project and resolve, you're gonna to have to go through and set all this stuff again. So I recommend naming, give it whatever name you want. Like I have one called Theater 11 Pictures, which is my production company. And then I know I can just choose that whenever I'm working on a film and I don't have to redo everything. Once you've named it, click OK, and then you can click Save. And if it prompts you with anything like this, just click Update. Now if I click the gear icon again, I could go in here, go to my new preset, and choose Load Preset. Okay, cool. The next thing we need to look at is the Resolve Preferences. And the preferences are project independent. So the things we set here will apply to every project that you do. So let's go to DaVinci Resolve in the top left, Preferences. Or on a Mac, you can hit Command, Comma. So the preferences screen is split up into two areas, system and user. Let's start with system and click on memory and GPU on the top left. You want these sliders to be all of the way to the right. And it should already be there, but if it's not, drag them over. And then if you're on a Silicon Mac, which is one of the newer M chips, you want to put a check here, use Apple Neural Engine when possible. Now click on media storage and uncheck direct IO next to your external drives. If you don't see your external drive, you can add it. Just click Add, click on it here, and click Open. You can also just add the actual folder where you keep your media files, whichever you want to do. Neither is right or wrong. And then once that's in here, uncheck that. And if you're wondering what that's about, this is meant to speed things up by having your computer look at RAM, memory, instead of going to the disk for certain things. But from what I've read, it's actually not doing that, and it at times it can slow your computer down. So if that changes, I'll post in the community, but right now, current info is go ahead and uncheck these. Now let's drop down to general and uncheck use Mac display color profiles for viewers. We might put a check back in this later when we're doing the color management, but for now, let's go ahead and uncheck that. All right, cool, now let's jump over to user and click on playback settings. Put a check mark in hide UI overlays and minimize interface updates during playback. And now go to Project Save and Load. You want this unchecked, it should be that at default. So now let's go down to Save Settings. Here is where you configure Resolve's automatic Project Save settings. This is important. I'm gonna show you how to do manual Project Saves in a minute, but for now, you want all three of these checked, and then here's what's going on. This first one is where you get to tell Resolve, hey, back up my project on, on its own, like automatically, every 20 minutes and then back it up again every two hours, and then back it up once a day. You can set this to whatever you want, but to just know that when it creates a new daily backup, it's not adding it. You can't go back eight days and get the old eight-day backup. It's overwriting the daily backup. The hourly backups are overwriting the old ones, etc. And this is where your project backups are kept. So there's no right or wrong here. You can set this to whatever you want, and then I'm gonna show you how to do manual project backups to a different location whenever you want. And in my opinion, this is very valuable and you need this, but the manual project backups are sometimes even more important. We'll talk about that in a second. And regarding the backup location, this is up to you. I typically leave this on my computer. It's not taking up a ton of space. And then I will do my manual backups to an external drive. Cool, so that's all we're gonna look at in preferences right now. Again, just like project settings, we can click the three dot menu in the top right and save our user preferences as a preset. So I recommend you do that and click OK, save your settings. And those settings will take effect when you restart Resolve. So let's do that really fast. Now one other thing before I show you how to do manual project backups, 
Under playback, go to render cache and set it to smart. This is part of what we're covering in post-production too, but for now, that'll do what you need it to do. Now to back up your project manually, it's very simple. Just go to File, Export Project. If you're on a Mac, hit Command E. And so what I do is I have a Project Backups folder on my external drive. So you can click New Folder and create that. And then in the Project Backups folder, I have folders for various films. On this particular hard drive, there's not much on here because this is just used for training. You can click New Folder, create that. And then within there, I create another new folder with the date of this particular project backup. And then click Create. And now if I click Save, it's going to put it in there. And if I go to Finder, there's my project backup. So to me, these are the important backups. Not that the auto backups can't save you, but if I do a bunch of changes on my movie, I'm editing my film and I spend a few hours or maybe even 30 minutes, whatever, but stuff that you would really be troubled at losing, then you need to create a manual project backup and you can't have too many backups, trust me. So my recommendation is frequently export your project so that you have that peace of mind. The other thing you can do is do manual saves of your project. So file, save project, or just command S on a Mac, it's probably Alt S or Control S or something on Windows. Command S is not the same as creating an entire project backup, a standalone backup, but it's also something to do just as a safety. Now say so you wanna access one of these backups, how would you do that? Just hit Shift one to bring up your available projects, Control click or right click on Windows and choose other project backups. And here you can load one of your other projects. So if I just clicked on one of these, click load, it's gonna want me to name it because I already have a project called the gold training here. So I could just say, now if I close this, there it is. So there's that full project restored. Now I don't need it, so I'm just gonna highlight it and hit delete. So control clicking and going to other project backups, these are automated backups or command S backups, and that's how you'd access those. To access one of the manual exports you did, right click, import project. And then I go to my external drive, project backups, and then I could click the DRP file right there and click open. And again, it's gonna ask for a unique name so it's not conflicting with the project that I already have. I'm just gonna cancel, but you get it. So that's it for general project settings, user preferences, and project backups. Hey, listen, if you like this training, you should really check out my film school right and direct. It's an online film school designed for one thing, to help aspiring directors realize their dreams faster than normal education routes. What do I mean by that? Well, I did the traditional thing. I went to film school in Los Angeles and it was great, it was fun, I learned a lot, but it cost a lot of money. And here's the thing, when you graduate from film school, pick your school, it doesn't matter. That is not going to land you a job in Hollywood, at least not a job as a director. Okay, Hollywood doesn't care about where you went to school. What they do care about is what movies you have actually directed and were they any good, okay? So what do you do if you spend a lot of money on school and you're kind of tabbed out and then you realize that the only way forward is to begin directing movies and it's on your dime? Well, that's a, kind of a scary place to be. And that's why you'll see a lot of people in LA working at restaurants and stuff because they're trying to make ends meet, they're trying to pursue their dreams and it's tough. Write and Direct helps you sidestep some of this, all right? I teach you, not only did I go to film school, but I've been working in independent film for years since then, and I've worked on studio films, and I teach you how to do a movie from development through post-production. We cover everything in granular detail so that you are equipped to pursue your dreams faster than I was able to, than so many other aspiring filmmakers. So check it out rightdirect.co. I really hope to see you there. And if not there, I'll see you here on the channel very soon.